You should not be proud if you raised your voice and screamed at them. No matter what you're doing. No matter what, right? Do you want them to do the same things that you've done? People getting divorced. Tearing their families apart. Coasting through marriage. Or fighting their way through it. I'm Cass. And I'm Catherine. We came back from the depths of hell to save our abusive, our toxic marriage. We're moral marriage. Let's flip divorce statistics with the new marriage. All right, guys, moral marriage, the new marriage. In this episode, we want to talk about why your partner doesn't believe your changes. Well, there could be some obvious, like when you have a restraining order and you might go to jail if you are charged with assault again, so your wife doesn't believe you. That's our story for part of it. But what are some other reasons why your wives don't believe men when they're making their changes? Uh, see, that's a tough one because my wives, actually, their men aren't the ones making the changes, right? That's my, my point. Oh, that is your point. <laughs> that's my point. Yeah, my wives are the, one make, the ones making the changes. But that said, their husbands have a hard time believing. Mm -hmm. Because, and the reason the husbands have a hard time believing these changes is because women get and men probably too, get, they get very fed up and they get frustrated. So a woman, at least most of the women that I work with, what'll happen is they will commit to doing things differently with their husband. So by the time they get to me, they've tried a lot of things. They've tried almost everything. People say, this is my last draw. I've tried everything. This is my last chance. And we save about 90% of those marriages. So we have, we have really a really good success rate. But <clears throat> what's happened previously is that the wife will try something and will not know how to handle her husband's reactions or her husband's disbelief. And so then she just says, screw it. And she stops being that good woman again. She stops being that strong woman. She starts going back to poor reactions and she's snapping at the kids again. And maybe she's drinking too much because she got fed up because she doesn't know how to deal with her husband's emotions. Now, is it her responsibility to deal with your, her husband's emotions? No, but you are in a marriage. And so when your husband has big emotions, it, like that's your sign that you need to be there for your husband. Now, if he's acting aggressively, emotionally abusive, all those sorts of things, you don't have to deal with it through that. There are ways, like we could talk about that in, in a different um, episode. But when, you, when your husband doesn't believe your changes, it's probably because you've made promises so many times in the past, but you didn't have the skills to actually make those changes. You didn't have the skill to support your husband when he questioned those changes, and so you've given up. You've failed, you've backed down, you've changed again, and then your husband, he's like, okay, what's different this time? You're obviously, it's like what, excuse me, if someone wants to lose weight and they keep um, drinking too much, going to McDonald's, whatever it is you're doing, you never lose that 20 pounds. And so the, I've had husbands, we worked in fitness and nutrition, so I'd have husbands that would say, I'm not paying for another program for you. We've spent thousands of dollars with you trying to lose these 20 pounds or these 50 pounds, why should I do it this time? Well, it's because you haven't done what you said you were going to do or you started it and you stopped it, you didn't have the skills, you didn't have the accountability, you didn't have the support, so you didn't stand a chance to actually be able to make those changes. So your husband thinks that you're a crying wolf. I think this is the same, vice versa. And I think that we can simplify it. If you're making changes and you want to grow, thr not just survive, but thrive in your marriage, the first and foremost is what Catherine's talking about, integrity. Can you follow through on what you say, right? Now that doesn't mean you can, you have to be perfect every time. Doesn't mean you, you don't have, you know, adjustments to the schedule or whatever, or just the things that need to be done, but you must follow through. So you can't just start communicating better, trying to have conversations and then stop. You can't just do that and then not take your partner out and have a good time together. You can't do that and then undermine the parenting together. Right? So you have to figure all this stuff out. Let's use parenting for example. All of a sudden you have a different view. Like we teach our, our the people in our programs a totally different connected parenting method that we got from Peace and Parenting. And basically it's, it's different than the way we were taught. Our generation, right? Almost every generation actually. And so a lot of times there's a lot of disagreements between you and your partner. And so when one of you is in one of our programs and doing this, you're leading your partner through a new connected parenting path, which by the way, works really well for your partnership as well, for your marriage as well. So we do that and then that now is not going well. So it undermines some of the easy, simple things like the schedule or that conversation of hello, how your day was, right? Or the dates are awkward not fun anymore. And so you start to 
go flip floppy. You're all kind of this big mess and we don't really understand what's going on. So after integrity, the next thing you have to do is figure out all the little skills that you need, right? And so once you've dialed in integrity, you continue to stack your skills and now you continue to show up more integrity, right? And then once you've done that, then you have to go to response, not reaction. Because your partner is not gonna, they're gonna be like, well, what the fuck is going on? Who are you? I don't believe this. I'm not, I'm not gonna fall for this again. How long is this gonna last? Yeah, if, why, know, why didn't you do this 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, too little, too late. And that, that yeah. brings me into the whole action speak louder than words. And I have a really unique way of, of looking at this. So in this case, it's true. Actions speak louder than words because you've said you're going to make these changes. You've said you're going to do X, Y, Z, and you don't follow through. In order for your partner to trust you, you need to follow through. Follow through is an action. But on the flip side, I tell a lot of my wives, actions don't speak louder than words. And the reason is sometimes a husband will say that they want to stay married. So when I do my screening calls with wives, I ask a lot of different questions and then I'll say, how does your husband feel? Do you know how your husband feels? Do you know how committed your husband is? And my wives, so many of them will say, well, my husband says that he wants to stay together, but he's not showing me in any way that he does, but he says that he doesn't want to lose me. He says that he doesn't want a divorce. He says that he loves me. He says X, Y, Z, he's, she's, and she'll say, but I don't know if that's true because that's not how he acts. And, and they'll say, they'll quote the age old, and I know actions speak louder than words, so I don't know if I should believe him. And I say, well, I think that there are times when actions speak louder than words. But here's the thing. If you don't know how to act, then you have to go on the words. So when I say to them, your husband's saying that he loves you. Your husband's saying that he doesn't want to lose you. He may be acting differently, but I would believe those words because he may not know how to act. He might have an, a wall built up of bitterness or resentment and hostility and all kinds of negative things. So he, can, he doesn't have access to the person that he used to be. He needs to put in the work to access that man, to act in the ways that he's saying. But in those moments, you know, you have to remember your husband is not a perfect person unless you're my husband. Mm. Yeah, but- I'll show you how, man. Yeah, but in those moments when your husband says, I, I love you and I wanna be with you, well, he doesn't, somewhere deep down, yes, he does know how to show you love and he knows how to show you that he wants to be with you, but he's overtaken with, like I said, bitterness, resentment, hostility, anger, insecurity, fear. Yeah. And that prevents him, again, he needs to do work to get over this wall, but that prevents him from acting in that way that he used to when you fell in love with him. He knows how, but in this case, when he's saying something and acting differently, it doesn't mean that it's a lie. It doesn't mean that you should believe his actions instead of his words. You can believe his words, but this is one of the reasons that you wouldn't believe your husband, but this is what he's saying with follow through. And this is some of the things that he teaches. But as a woman, if your husband isn't following through, it's not your fault that you don't believe him. It's not your fault that you think he's gonna fail or he's gonna back down. But if he's saying the words that he wants to do it, that means he needs help. Yeah, and you know, further to that, like no matter who's showing up differently, the response, or we would call it reaction, well, I would call it reaction, that you're getting instead of response, meaning response good, reaction bad, it's because they know who you are. And everybody knows what they're supposed to say. Yeah, I wanna fix the marriage, I'm going to therapy. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to say, right? And so when you have this disbelief, this self-preservation mode, right? I'm not gonna fall for this again, too little, too late, all these things that people say, right? Or act in a way, you have to continually show up knowing that your partner is holding that against you. Like, where have you been for the last 20 years? The reason I say that is that's just one came up yesterday. You know, where have you been? Why didn't you do this 20 years ago, right? I've had guys that go on these beautiful weekend trips and their wife just mean the whole trip, all about where was it the last 20 years or five years or Rather whatever. Rather than appreciating that it's here now. That's right. But when you know that and you can respond, go to the insecurity show that we did, like when you start to understand that you can let go of all this anxiety and just keep showing up, that's the only way to move it forward. You literally have to be the person you want to be. It doesn't matter how your partner treats you. Oh, it doesn't matter that. how yeah. angry they get. It doesn't matter how disrespectful you think they are, how much they're using sex against you as a weapon. I don't really give a shit. Who do Who you, you want to be? Those be? Moments? Yes, babe. Can yes. you stand behind the person 
that you are, the way you're reacting, the way you're responding, the things you're saying, the way you're lashing out or not lashing out. Can you stand behind that person, no matter what the other person is doing? If you don't believe us, forget your spouse for a second. People don't believe think, us. That happens. What? If you don't believe us, think about your children for a second. You're a single parent, okay? Block out the marriage for a second. You're a single parent. God forbid your partner dies. Now, we all know what it's like. Parenting is like our most triggering thing, right? Like we don't really, the Catherine and I don't have the issue. We, humbling. Kids, yeah, kids are humbling. And so, you know, their emotions are running wild. Don't you feel bad if you smacked their hand? If you screamed at them? If you, like, I'm not saying we're perfect. This is, a, this is the hardest thing with us, parenting, right? But um, that's, that's why you get coaches, right? That's why we, we love Michelle. But like, the thing about it is, if you don't believe us when we're talking about your partner, who do you want to be with your kids? You should not be proud if you raised your voice and screamed at them. No matter what you're doing. No matter what, right? Do you want them to do the same things that you've done? R let's pretend your partner didn't die. You got divorced. This is happening all the time. We don't really have to pretend for a lot of you. It's happening right now. You're not making the steps. You're not moving forward. You're not getting help, right? Or you're doing the same things that doesn't work for anybody else, like therapy, right? Otherwise, we'd see divorce not um, declining or inclining. We see declining, right? Like, so think about who you want to be. You should not be proud if you lose it on your kids. It's not teaching them the same lessons that are going to, or the new lessons that are going to give them the new marriage. Think about your legacy. Okay. All right. We'll see you next episode.